フルカウンター Alright, lads, welcome back to the Grand Cross video. And boys, they'll be talking about the Curse by Light movie from 70S that came out over a week ago. And obviously, this is not a movie review channel, this is a Grand Cross channel. So, obviously, we're going to relate it towards Grand Cross and talk about potential characters, combo ultimates, moves, and obviously, you know, outfits and special units we could see come towards the game. I spoiled, hopefully, the release date of this actual collaboration coming. And uh, massive disclaimer, massive spoilers for not only the movie, but also the anime. This does take place after the final episode of the anime. So, if you even not caught up yet then i do uh, heavily advise you to watch it because there is a massive spoiler in here and uh, as well for the movie we're going to break it down what we could see so we're going to kind of just go through all the best bits so yeah boys if you do enjoy these type of videos rather than my normal gameplay stuff then please do hit the like button let me know you enjoyed the video but also support the channel as well so boys let's just dive in okay so before we dive into the when we could see the actual event come let's go back to the first update the first ever movie collaboration we got right or event whatever you want to call it so Firstly, boys, we only got Elet and Velion. There's still a ton of characters to pull from the first actual movie. So, the thing we're going to get a new movie update soon is um, a little unlikely. And I'll break down why we won't see it for maybe another year and a half. But, uh, look, for right now, we didn't even get Gara. Or, is it Gara? I think I think it's how you pronounce it. Uh, Atra Pump, the boy Galen's son, probably. I don't know who he is, but... He it might be related to Galen somehow. But my point is, we never got any of these characters. We also didn't get Salad, the main boy character that looks like Mediodis. And also, the big one, the Endurabellion, which I think is probably a good thing we waited. Because, well, there's a high chance now if we got a Salt Melee, that these demons could actually be somewhat quite good. Bellion is trash, and that's because he came out super, super early on. So, potentially, boys, before we go into the new movie, we could see... Two to maybe even five update worths of the actual old movie we could get first. So before we actually try and predict when we could see the Curse by Light movie update come towards the game, we got to think, well, we only ever got two characters, so it's possible that we bet we get the bare minimum the first time. It's possible they change some things around. So let's just break it down. All right, so let's break down when we could see this actual event come. And boys, I mean, if you probably know why as well, let me just say it because you don't know. The big part is why we might not see it even this year or even next year is because, well, it does feature characters from the end of the series, which does mean we do see full Wing King. We do see characters like Mayel and also Wild, who had yet to get a model in-game. And I do not think that Netmarvel will reveal these hyped characters through a natural story event rather than, you know, making them a festival, putting them in a story mode chapter where they appear for the first time and making a big deal about it, right? So, it's very unlikely we will not get this event until all of these characters do appear in the actual, I guess, the game first. However, there's one possibility that we do get is, well, we get an update based around the characters, but not get the story mode content until, you know, they want to release it because well like the first one we got the characters and also the story update itself but when we go break down the characters someone like you know dahlia and obviously dubs i do think it's kind of possible we could see those characters come to the game first before we actually do get you know the story content okay so breaking down the two characters we're going to be getting first it's going to be dahlia and dubs now you could argue if you like these characters or not but i do think these lot were highlight of the media because they are two new characters in the 70s universe and they do look pretty pretty sick i'm not gonna lie and um at least for grand cross wise i do think these lot will be the biggest addition towards the game because well these are actually a giant and a fairy which you know is sorely needed in this game so dahlia the green guy obviously got the fairy wings is obviously a fairy and a dove is despite his appearance actually is a giant so um let's break down the first two characters so let's let's say we're gonna get base form first right we're not gonna get the transform state the power-ups we get later on during the movie so the first two i guess the first one will be dahlia which will have um his spirit spear darren heart form one spirit spear so this guy first he looks pretty sick he's actually got clothes on like a pants i thought that was his skin like how he has um his uh like you know his actual like fur kind of like super saiyan 4 a little bit this um arguably would be his first skill single target attack but then moving on he'll probably have his fifth form increase which he does like little needles which um to be fair that that's literally standard already. His moves are kind of already done for him. Now, going over to um, Dubs, a little bit confusing. So, Dubs, I believe, will be a little bit different at the start, right? Because bear in mind, this is not his powered up version. Now, they could obviously release the new one or like the one I'm going to say later on. But for his first form, could be kind of cool. So, it would be Dubs, but the actual assist will be, you know, his um, his actual bird where he rides him, right? Now, he will ride the bird later on, but just hear me out here. So, the first time you see the character, which is what I'm going off here, is um, he does eat someone with the bird, but oh, to do a poison cloud now the reason why they did this it was to hide their appearance a little bit because um they don't outright show the character straight away so they could skip this version entirely but if the actual bird is you know the weapon right like how we have elizabeth the hawk then it, that would mean you customize the bird which would be kind of cool but then if we get the new powered up version it would mean he would have two different weapons which would mean a new name version so it may be a little bit weird for some people but 
if we're going off the version where we're going to get the base form of late first and like the power version later on, then there might be a big gap where people wouldn't mind too much. So going over the buffed awakened version, you could say, would be this one here. So he does get this shield and also uh, death scythe, which will be the main weapon, right? So the bird would not be attacking, which I which is why I think, you know, adding the first dubs would be kind of cool because then the bird would be the main gimmick of the actual character. But this way he would have a death scythe and you better customize the scythe and also shield, like how we have Brynhilda, which, um, could be some cool customizations. If they really want to, they could make the actual headpiece um, dubs, which would be like, you know, he changes actual outfit. But I mean, they could do what they want here. A lot of customizations they could do. But going over his skills, the shield could be some sort of stance character or like some stance skill, you know, lowering defense or doing something along the lines of that, like Arthur. And his death scythe would literally just be, you know, him attacking. Uh, he does use it against uh, Zeldus when he uses Omnius Nebula, so he doesn't do too much and we can't have anything to go off here. But, you know, they can make a skill up there. But his ultimate could be kind of cool because this could be the second character to actually get Expel. So he does actually get Staff of Imprisonment, which um, is his massive claws here. That that traps, you know, Medius and Elizabeth in an actual spell that kind of locks them out for some time being, right? So, literally, the skills are already in the game. Expel. Um, they could change the animation a little bit, so it's like a cloud of, like, mist. It could be some sort of, like, glow effect. Um, even though the same skill could be a different animation, once again, it could work perfectly. They also could give him an actual, like, uh, hypn hypnotizing skill. It could get his flute, I think is what you call it, and uh, yeah, it could, like, so, like Magatro stun, you know, decrease, decrease stuff, uh, disable stuff to you. It could do quite a lot with the character here. But also, um, this is why I point out this screenshot. I am the one who made Lost Fane. So I believe he's the one who made Order of the Sin Sacred Treasure, or if it might be just Lost Fane. So the passive here could be some sort of debuff for the sins. Um, I mean, you could argue that would be quite confusing to add into the game because technically, you know, Captain Medias don't have Sacred Treasure, Lost Fane, so he shouldn't do less damage. So I I'm not too sure what he could do here because um, they'll have to add like an extra tag for like Sacred Treasure. I'm not too sure, but he could go along the line of something here for that character. Okay, so moving on to the powered up version for Dahlia. So he does get a massive armor. And uh, the reason why this is a little different is because, well, when he does transform into his army state, he does say, I'm not a big fan of magic, which if you saw early on, he did use his um, fifth form increase and also his spirit spear. And well, that is magic. So in this form right here, he just uses fists and uh, he does go pretty crazy. He almost have like an aura aura from Jojo, but his ultimate is definitely gonna be this skill here, which is a uh, killer fairy. And uh, this will definitely be a single target attack. They will somehow make it AoE in Grand Cross because you always do it for some reason. But yeah, this will be a super crazy move I can see him doing. They could make it an actual skill, but he does use it like, like, like a final skill or like final attack even. So I definitely think this will be his ultimate for this form at least. Alright, so those are the two different characters we could see come to the game, but also four units because, well, you have actually got power-ups. Now, moving over, we do have kind of like a troll unit a little bit, and uh, that is Grimor, Hauser, and Gil Thunder. Now, these guys could have separate characters here, or they could be a three-man unit if they really wanted to, but they actually do wield Dubs' weapons, which is from the Giants and Fairies, and, well, they actually have some special power-ups because they are, you know, powerful weapons. And uh, it's more of a joke character, but I could definitely see him doing it, right, just for fun. Maybe even on April Fool's, have these three on a banner that'd be kind of cool to release right okay so moving on we could get gelda now that's going off the fact that we you know gelda's probably already in the game by the time we do get this event uh, so they could make an actual you know curse by light version of gelda which would uh have this move here as the ultimate i would assume or maybe her actual uh skill because well if we already have a gelda in game it's highly likely the ultimate is going to be the same one as we get for curse by light so this will be one of her moves probably which is called ash dust brutal and uh yeah this is something i can see her having just to kind of you know add a new gelda to the game because she does come very very late in the anime, so she don't really have that much potential to add new characters. There's something they could do here. Moving on, um, this is something I want to point out, and that is uh, the Sins. Now, the Sins do a lot of moves. You know, you have Rush Rock DM, which could be an ultimate again, even though that is one of their skills early on. Uh, you do have Sacred Treasure Barn, which I don't really want to include for this video, because, well, you know, they could just give him that, you know, literary model or that unit when he does show up in the anime. But um, I don't recall, I could be wrong here, but I don't remember seeing uh, Sunflower King. Uh, obviously, this is kind of a callback to his first actual ultimate or, you know, Blue King or the Skinny Kings we have in the game already, who does do Sunflower, but this is more of a beefy up version since it is Wing King, so we could see a new ultimate version of Wing King or even actual, you know, a, a normal move they could see. But uh, yeah, I want to point this one out because uh, this was a little bit special. Okay, so many others does get a lot of love during the actual movie, and obviously he's the main character. But firstly, I think this might be the first time we see it, and uh, that is many others with wings. Now he does have wings later on, or I guess in the anime when he goes into his salt many form, but we don't see him in his demon form or like his base form even. So um, this could be a curse by light exclusive uh, Medios. So it's kind of cool to think about. So assuming here this will be one character, so 
uh, one of his moves he does is Dark Execution, which is kind of cool. Um, this he kind of like just kind of slashes in him. Um, I would say this would be an ultimate, but then again, they could just make a natural skill. Single target A, we still do want to do it. And uh, this one is very, very sick. So we have Dark Prominence, which is, um, I showed the actual animation of it because it's super, super sick. He like kind of charge up the sword a little bit and he like whacks him with darkness. It's super, super cool. Um, that could be his ultimate because I can see that actually being really cinematic a little bit. But yeah, that is uh, one of the we could see in the game and possibly, you know, the, a winged many we could see which would be super super cool kind of like how we have zelda's already with the wings you know just a great addition towards the game all right so the next character we could see is actually going to be winged zeldris now we already have a winged zeldris so this could be a new version of the festival what we have right now and that will be ominous nebula zeldris now we are going to get our ominous nebula zeldris later on but he doesn't have wings when he uses it so at least this one this will be a festival zeldris version of ominous nebulous so that that's i think kind of a cool mechanic also the effects that you kind of use here are kind of cool and uh, maybe it's a special attack old move i don't know what they can do but um i would kind of throw that out there Okay, so to wrap up the unit part of the video, that is going to be the actual final part, which is dual units. Now, we, I highly likely we're going to get some in the future, maybe when this before this update even comes out. But I would say there kind of already is dual units in the game with, you know, Elizabeth and Hawk. But, like, that's more of, like, an assist because um, Elizabeth never actually attacks. He just cheers on a Hawk, right? And then odds on Hawk, you could argue it's the first dual unit, but, you know, we the, the animals. When we actually see the first ever dual unit where we have, you know, a human and a human... That's what I'll say the first dual unit. Now, going over what we could see, uh, I'm going to go and say the first one will be um, Guild Thunder and uh, Hauser. They do do a move later on, which is called Combo Move Spider Net Crash, which once again could be an actual, you know, combined attack for an actual character later on. Maybe a Hauser or a Guild Thunder. But I think it's better to save that for an actual, you know, a dual unit. Makes a lot of sense. Now, one thing I'm not going to say is... Um, Elizabeth and Medgillis. Now, I know them two are together a lot during the actual movie, but during the end fight of the Demon King, you know, Medgillis and Elizabeth, the first time we start fighting together, it's kind of a bigger moment to make them a dual unit, so I don't think we're going to get a dual unit based off, you know, Elizabeth and Medgillis for this movie. However, Zeldris and Gildar don't really get too much time to show during the actual anime, because, well, it's kind of towards the end of the series, so I do think, you know what, for this movie, they could be a dual unit. They don't fight together too much, so I'm not too sure I can include, you know, screenshot off the fight, but I want to point that one out. And as well, since it's kind of brought up already, we could get Dahlia and Dubs. They fight together, kind of, but um, more or less, you know, not together, but like next to each other. But once again, them, them two are kind of a pair. We could see it in the game. How I wonder how that worked though, because that'll be like, you know, Oz and Hawk makes sense because they're small characters. But we got Dahlia and his like massive armor form with Dubs with the parry. There's going to be no room. <laughs> it's going to be weird, man, but I'll, I'll, I'll love to see it. Because you know, it'd be funny if we say we get uh, off topic right now, right? But let's say we get three dual units. Imagine playing 4v4 PvP. You have like 12 characters on the field. It looks so weird. So I think we may never even see dual units for that reason alone. But I digress. All right, boys, saving the best for last. Now it's going to be Zeldris and Mediotis. Now, literally the same thing like uh, Gilfond and Hauser. They do say combo move again, which is a tyrant killing. And uh, this should be a crazy move, man. AoE or something. These units could be sick together, man. Uh, obviously, you know, Zeldris and Mediotis are a big part of the series. And uh, I think we could see one based on the actual anime. But I think it's best safe for this, man. Because uh, this will be a massive part of the story. And uh, just for the, the movie itself. And like, you know... This is kind of the last attack we've ever seen in 70S, man, because uh, the series does end after this move. Uh, so I do think it's kind of like one of the hypest part of the actual whole series together, because the, throughout the whole series, Medias and Zelda have been finding each other for so long, and uh, I do think it's kind of like a highlight of the whole like series itself. So this should be, uh, you know, something safe, like a festival unit even. But yeah, boys, that is it for the actual characters, but that is not it. There are some outfits I want to point out that we do see during the actual movie that I want to point out. Uh, potential characters too, who knows, right? So the first one is Wedding Dian. Now, we're have wedding the end but i do think um it does look quite nice right they could give it actual customization i do think it should be a character but one thing that netmob was not really doing anymore is giving out new outfits like you know seasonal outfits we got you know a halloween one we got christmas ones we got new year's ones but we never got them again we just got we, now we just get units and we never get like halloween outfits we just have repeats now which is kind of annoying but uh yeah i do think this could be an actual wedding the end an actual wedding the end that we could get Although brief after it is shown during the actual movie and uh, he does have kind of some swag on which um, I could see is a I would have to say another character because well 
I mean, it's Anfield character, because it's either one, right? They can even do it for an event, uh, Universal for all offers, because he's missing an arm, so, like, uh, big yikes, but, you know, I think this could be, like, a Universal one. And going off an offer, good lord, boys, this is a drippy outfit for Merlin, man. Uh, I really hope it's an actual unit, because uh, this looks sick. We do have, a, kind of, like, a purple like, wizard outfit for Merlin. Uh, once again, I don't think this should be free. I think it should be a unit, but... Um, just in case it is an outfit, not an actual thing later on. I want to point out that it might just be an outfit, not a unit. But yeah, this is actually a super sick outfit. Okay, so for the last outfit, I'm going to say it can be Elizabeth. Now, many Otis does have, you know, his white outfit, which, you know, could argue could be an outfit. But we can already have that with uh, New Year's um, New Year's Legend uh, Medi Otis, which is a white outfit. It's a little bit different. And it could be like a universal outfit for another character, like a Uh But I do think the understand that one here is going to be Elizabeth. And, um, yo, she's ripped out, man. Like, the the jewelry, it actually does look kind of sick, man. I'm not even gonna lie to you, lot. That this could be a unit, but I think if anything, it might be an outfit. I would hope to say that if we do get one of them here, it would be a universal outfit because it'd be pretty sick to get, like you know, you know, to wear this outfit for all the Elizabeths. It'd be super sick, man. I hope they do do it. All right, lads, that's gonna wrap up today's video. So hope you guys did enjoy this video. This took quite a while to make, but like how the movie ends, the age of gods is over, and thus the age of chaos for humanity now begins, and that is how the movie ends. A really really good ending after the end credits because this kind of does kind of lead into the Fortnite apocalypse which um does give me hope that they actually might animate in the future uh, i do hope if they do animate that sequel they do actually you know take some pride and actually you know time in animating it because to be fair boys dean studio i believe they did connoisseur and i believe from what i saw and heard it's actually well animated and even this movie itself was well animated too but you know, they, they ran out of time, they were forced to make it, they outsourced a lot of stuff, you know, I do hope the next sequel is a fresh start for, you know, Dean Studio, whoever does animate it, and does make, you know, the series good again, because I do think Seven Yes is actually really, really good, but, you know, the, the hype parts, you know, the end of the anime was just poorly animated, and it just kind of makes it, a, 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 you know, a pain to watch, and something hard to recommend, but boys, we always have a grand cross to animate the scene, so that's how we're gonna get it. So thankfully we are saved, unless the game does close down before that. But yeah, boys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Let me know what you're hype more hype for. You know, what unit, what dual unit, what outfit you're excited for. Did I miss something? Cause um once again, I'm I'm not gonna go off Miel or King or you know Wild or even you know characters that you know aren't supposed to be in in the story yet. You know, it doesn't make too much sense to do that. So boys, thank you for watching and uh yeah, peace.